It has been a long time since we've had a part on the channel that sucks this much. Today's video is brought to you by Thermaltake and the Core P3 Pro. Bring out the modder in you with Thermaltake's unique and modular open air design. The Core P3 Pro offers room enough for nearly any build, with support for dual 420mm radiators, motherboards up to EATX in size, and room enough for even the largest of modern graphics cards. With an endless number of layouts and orientations, you'll be sure to turn heads with your next build in the Thermaltake Core P3 Pro. Click the link down in the video description to learn more. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. I am always on the lookout for a good deal on PC parts, even if I've got to take a risk every now and then. Chinese X79 motherboards? Turns out they run pretty well. Running vGPU on consumer cards? Been there, done that. Every once in a while, though, even I get burned, and this card has me furious. This is the 51 RISC RTX 3070 Ti-M. And no, I didn't misspeak there, nor is that M why this card is a scam. 51 RISC has actually done something pretty neat here and taken the RTX 3070 Ti mobile chip intended for a laptop and connected it to a desktop PCI Express card. So what's the difference between a 3070 Ti and its mobile variant? The desktop 3070 Ti is based on NVIDIA's 8 nanometer GA104 GPU die, with 6,144 CUDA cores, 96 ROPs, and 48 RT cores, paired with 8GB of GDDR6X memory. The 3070 Ti Mobile is still based on the GA104, but a slightly cut down variant, with only 5,888 CUDA cores, the same 96 ROPs, only 46 RT cores, and 8GB of GDDR6 non-X memory, which is nearly 30% slower. The mobile chip also has a lower TDP of 220 watts versus 290 watts on its desktop counterpart. If that was the only problem with this card, I'd be jumping for joy at the potential value on display here, as this GPU was only $330 shipped from AliExpress. But unfortunately, that's far from where the bad news ends. Loading up GPU-Z, we can actually see there are even fewer CUDA cores on display here, with only 5,632 active on the GPU. We've also been cut down to only 80 ROPs, even though the official GA104 dies are supposed to have a full 96 enabled. If that was the only problem with this card, I'd still be excited for it, as a bin down 3070 Ti should still perform well enough today. But this also is far from where the bad news ends. From what I can tell, 51 Risk is a fairly new company in Shenzhen, and they've been designing and selling graphics cards in much the same way that X79 and X99 motherboard manufacturers were, either using new old stock chips on new PCBs, or in some cases, desoldering chipsets off of decommissioned parts to sell as new. This isn't inherently a problem, and is a practice that I've fully supported in the past. The company is currently selling everything from AMD RX 550s and 580s to GTX 1050 Ti's, 2060 Supers, and even some RTX 3080 10GB cards. Most of their GPUs have pricing that falls in line with current retail pricing, meaning there's nothing enticing anyone to buy a GPU from an unknown manufacturer. But then there's this RTX 3070 Ti-M. At just $330, it undercuts not only the 3070 Ti, but the 3060 Ti and the 3060 as well. Meaning even if the performance isn't quite on par with the 3070, the additional CUDA and RT cores could make this very competitive with the RTX 3060 Ti for significantly less cost. So nothing left to do but fire up this GPU and see how it performs, right? Well, that's where the trouble really starts. You see, even though this is a GA104 GPU and it is recognized by the PC as a 3070 Ti notebook GPU, it refuses to install any drivers from Nvidia's website. Now, 51 Risk, to their credit, does include this little USB key with a patch set of drivers to run on the card. But this is also red flag number one, as anytime you're going to be dependent on third-party manufacturer drivers, you're beholden to them for continued support. You want updated drivers? You better hope that 51 Risk or the community comes out with one. Well, as a reviewer, if I need to install third-party drivers to test out the card, so be it. I can take that risk on a sandboxed PC. That's when I ran into red flag number two, and this is a big one. Running the first of two installers out of the RAR file led to Windows Defender flag for Whack Attack Trojan, which I then verified by uploading the suspect file to VirusTotal. 
And seeing as how Whack Attack was embedded into a custom NVIDIA installer package, I have no doubts this was intentional. But attempts at my personal information and my personal PC aside, I still decided to soldier on. For science. While investigating the malware flag, I extracted all the files from the NVIDIA installers and attempted to install the drivers manually from Device Manager. Windows still wasn't able to detect a compatible driver automatically, but pointing it to the driver INF did show a single match. The problem is that driver isn't signed. So either I trust this driver implicitly with admin rights on my PC just so I can play some games, while also ignoring the fact that this installer just tried to infect me not three minutes ago, or I need to find another method of getting the card up and running. Again, for science, I disabled driver signing verification and attempted to install it anyway. The screen went black and then returned with a code 43, meaning the driver failed to install or launch. So back to step one. I decided to do a little bit more investigation into the card. And according to GPU-Z and Windows, the GPU was giving a device ID of 10DE24A0, which correlates to an RTX 3070 Ti found in an Asus ROG G17 laptop from 2022. Maybe that driver will work. A quick download later, and we're not only into the installer, but unlike the driver download from NVIDIA's site, this one isn't complaining about no video card being detected. However, results were even less encouraging, as no driver even attempted to install. Taking another look at the device ID, we see the vendor ID on the 3070 TIM has been modified, which is likely causing our issues when installing drivers. 10DE is NVIDIA's vendor ID, but there should be a second field tied to that, and this card is showing 0000. Inside the ASUS INF driver file, we can see there are entries for 10DE24A0. It seems I'm definitely on the right track, but unfortunately I'm not more skilled than this when it comes to diagnosing driver install fails. This is an incredibly frustrating point to be stuck at. Unlike the scam GPU I looked at quite a few years ago, the hardware here is actually what is advertised. We've got a PCI Express X16 4.0 GPU with a GA104 RTX 3070 Ti mobile on board, along with 8GB of GDDR6 memory. If there were a way to make this card work, it would probably be a pretty solid performer. But as it stands, there's no way to install a driver that I'd be comfortable running on any PC, let alone recommending that you go out and buy this card. If you have any ideas, would like a bio stump from this card, or have any possible solutions, I'd be glad to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. But as far as this video goes, I think this is where I'm gonna have to wrap it up. Make sure to like this video if you thought it was good, and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Mastodon for daily shenanigans like this, and if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support dumb purchases like this, make sure to look me up on Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. When something goes wrong or when I get scammed out of $300, I like to break out the scotch. So today I'm going with the Johnny Walker High Rye Blended Scotch. Cause you know I love a rye whiskey. And well, how could we go wrong putting it in a scotch? Oh, where did this glass come from? Oh, damn. <laughs> It's almost as if he planned this. <laughs> He's like, which scotch should I go with? That one over there. That one over there. <laughs> oh damn, here's a here's an empty glass just sitting right next to me. What bar doesn't have mixed nuts on the counter? So what I will say is this is not a smooth whiskey. Uh, this one definitely lets you know that you are drinking alcohol. It's got a very, very ethanol, very corn flavor right up front. Now I don't know and highly doubt that they used corn in the production of this particular scotch. That seems kind of blasphemous to me, but that's kind of what I'm getting. It's, it's very, very alcohol forward. 
once you get past that initial burn, this is very, very standard Johnny Walker, uh, where you're not quite sure if it's an Isla or a peated scotch or somewhere in the middle. And it kind of tickles both those fancies at the same time, which is why I think, despite people like constantly dunking on Johnny Walker as like entry level or crap scotch, it continues to be a very good selling scotch. Is it gives you the notes that scotch should have, regardless of what camp you want to sit in. You've got just a little bit of that peated smoke. You've got just a little bit of that, that Highland sour mash kind of thing going on. But then the high rye of this really kicks in and you're left with a little bit of caramel and peppercorn. And honestly, for as harsh as this one starts, it finishes very well balanced and leaves you wanting more. 